Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta, I'm a consultant cardiologist. Today I wanted to do a video on the subject of cardiomyopathy, okay? Um, cardiomyopathy is a term that uh, is often used in patients who, who are suspected of having heart disease. It's a term which causes a great deal of anxiety and I thought I would try and use this video to demystify cardiomyopathy a little bit. Okay, uh, one of the um, situations in which the word cardiomyopathy comes up often is uh, when you hear of someone just suddenly dropping down dead, you know, a footballer, for example, playing football or, um, and then suddenly on the pitch, you know, collapsing and they say, oh, he died suddenly. And that's really scary, you know, when someone suddenly drops down dead. And often at the end of it, they those people are told uh, or are, are diagnosed as having had a cardiomyopathy. So I thought I would just talk to you about cardiomyopathy uh, and uh, try and explain um, what we do know about cardiomyopathy and what we don't know about cardiomyopathy. And there's undoubtedly a lot that we don't know as doctors, okay? So the first thing is, what is cardiomyopathy? The word cardiomyopathy uh, refers to cardio, which is heart, myo, which is muscle, pathy, which comes from the word pathos, which means suffering. So in literal uh, terms, cardiomyopathy simply means heart muscle disease. That's it. That term does not incorporate the cause of heart muscle disease. And in fact, there are lots of causes of heart muscle disease. When we know the cause, then we give it an additional term. So if we thought that the uh, the reason the muscle was diseased was because of a heart attack, then we call that ischemic cardiomyopathy. Ischemia meaning that the, the heart didn't get the blood, part of the heart muscle died, and that is what the cause of the cardiomyopathy is. Uh, if we think it's, the, it's a virus, then we call it a viral cardiomyopathy, but a lot of times we don't know what the cause is. So the first question is, why is cardiomyopathy so important? And the reason is twofold. The first thing to say is that the heart is a pump. Its role is to pump blood around. It is uh, <clears throat> the only uh, the, the 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 orchestrator of the circulations, to speak. So, if you have heart muscle disease, that un then undoubtedly, in some way, the pumping ability of the heart is diminished. Okay. So not as much blood goes round, because not as much blood goes round, uh, not, our, our vital organs don't get as much blood as they should. That triggers off a set of compensatory mechanisms, which can, in the long run, cause more damage to the heart muscle and just more damage to our vital organs. So one of the problems with the cardiomyopathy is that you can get this progressive uh, failure of the pump, progressive pump failure, where the heart as a pump is not functioning as effectively over a period of time and gets weaker and weaker. That's one of the uh, complications associated with cardiomyopathy. Fortunately, we have some really good medications now. So if we were able to pick that up at an early stage, then you can treat it and hopefully abort the progression. The more sinister problem with the cardiomyopathy is if the heart muscle is diseased, then the electrics passing through that muscle can misbehave uh, because the muscle is in itself diseased. So the electrics will become, um, <clears throat> can become disrupted and people with a cardiomyopathy are prone to developing sudden heart rhythm disturbances. And some of those heart rhythm disturbances can be incompatible with life. And this is one of the mechanisms by which people who are, you know, athletes um, who have been uh, tested and who have been screened uh, can still have something bad happen to them uh, because the heart uh, with a cardiomyopathy can misbehave at any time. And if it misbehaves, that can be very dangerous. Okay, so those are the two things. Progressive pump failure, uh, but more sinister is sudden heart rhythm disturbances causing... <clears throat> sudden collapse or death. So the next question is, how do we look for cardiomyopathy? Okay, And the truth is that um, <clears throat> when you're trying to identify cardiomyopathy, it's a bit like looking at a lineup, you know, of criminals, for example. So when you're asked to identify someone, you know, in a lineup, of, well, in a lineup where you have to identify a suspect, uh, you're basically basing it on visual appearance, okay? So if you, for example, uh, you know, look at the heart and if the heart looks abnormal, then that gives you a clue to cardiomyopathy, but the heart can look completely normal as well. And those are the difficult patients because 
you cannot tell what's going on in that heart. You can only base your judgment based on the appearance of the heart. So in terms of appearances, what are the kind of things that can give us a clue that there may be a cardiomyopathy going on, heart muscle disease, okay? The first thing is if the heart is not contracting as well as it should, if the heart as a pump is not pumping as well as it should, then that's as good a sign as any that the heart muscle is in some way affected, okay? Um, the best way we look at that is by echocardiography where you can actually study the heart and look at the heart and if and you can work out how well the heart pumps uh, by calculating something called the ejection fraction which is again a very crude measure uh, where you basically look at the heart at its biggest point at its uh, when it's full with blood you draw a circle around it at that point you uh, then wait for the heart to contract so that it's at smallest level you draw a circle uh, you minus the smaller area from the bigger area divided by the bigger area and multiply it by 100 and you get something called the ejection fraction okay and a normal ejection fraction is about 60 percent because the heart never completely empties it always does this it doesn't completely empty so the normal ejection fraction is 60% and as the um, if the ejection fraction is below 60% then that is more representative of a possible cardiomyopathy. That's the easy way to pick up cardiomyopathy. However, sometimes the heart is not weak, okay? In that setting, you could look at the heart and if the heart looks abnormally enlarged, if it's particularly big in size, then that points to uh, a possible cardiomyopathy. In that, sense, in that um, instance, the cardiomyopathy is described as a dilated cardiomyopathy. It means that the heart is enlarged and that is the cause or that is the description of that heart muscle weakness. And in a later video, I will talk about why the heart enlarges. Um, the other conditions, uh, the, the other sort of appearance that can sometimes herald a cardiomyopathy is if the heart looks abnormally muscular. So if the heart looks abnormally muscular, it's not enlarged as such, uh, but it's more muscular than what you would expect of a normal heart, then that points to a possible cardiomyopathy. That is called a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Okay, The muscle is abnormally hypertrophied and it's called a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Common causes of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy are high blood pressure. So long-standing high blood pressure will cause the heart muscle to become abnormally uh, thickened as with any muscle which has to work against a higher pressure. So high blood pressure can cause a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. But more commonly, there's a genetic form called uh, inherited hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, also known as hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy sometimes, but it doesn't have to be obstructive. So that's another type of cardiomyopathy. Um, so you can just, so those are the three types of cardiomyopathy you can commonly pick up. But of course, some people may have a completely normal looking heart, uh, but the heart muscle in some way is affected, but it doesn't translate into a visual change in the way uh, the heart looks on a scan. And they're the most difficult patients to diagnose because you don't know that there's something going on in the heart muscle. You can only base your assessment on the visual appearance. And if the muscle looks normal, uh, then you think that it, it's normal, but the heart muscle could still be abnormal. Um, <clears throat> Uh, and those are the most difficult cases. So in those cases, it is easy to miss a cardiomyopathy. And really, the only way you work out whether those people have a cardiomyopathy is if in some way the heart has shown signs of misbehaving. So if the patient has had a cardiac arrest in the past suddenly, then even though the heart looks normal, you think, okay, well, this heart has misbehaved. There must be heart muscle disease going on. The problem is sometimes the first time you get this, uh, you get this um, sense that the heart has misbehaved is when the person has had a cardiac arrest. And that, you know, of course, if they don't survive, then it makes it very difficult. Uh, but if they do survive, then you can make that diagnosis just based on the fact that the heart has misbehaved in the past, even though it looks normal. Um, if a person has um, a very abnormal ECG, for example, so that tells you that even though heart muscle looks normal, if the ECG is incredibly abnormal, then that suggests that the electrics in that heart muscle are not completely normal. That again points to a possible cardiomyopathy. Uh, what else? 
those are the only real ways that we can pick up cardiomyopathy. The, the only other thing I would say is if there's a family history. So if someone comes to me with a very, very strong family history of a cardiomyopathy, uh, then you would suspect it, even though the heart structurally looks normal on the scan uh, but if the ECG is abnormal uh, then one would uh, have a low threshold for investigating them further. In that setting when someone has a family history of cardiomyopathy, a strong family history, sometimes what you can do is genetic analysis. So you take um, blood tests from those people who have been affected, you look for genes which have been associated with cardiomyopathy and you look for those genes in your own blood and if there is the gene, then that makes it very likely that you have a cardiomyopathy. But those are the only real ways at this point in time that we can look for cardiomyopathy. We unfortunately can't pick up those people who have a structurally normal appearing heart and who haven't as yet misbehaved or in whom the heart hasn't misbehaved. In that way, it's like looking at a lineup of suspects. You can look at the person who looks like... Um, you know, um, looks like someone who could have committed a crime. Uh, you could go by their past record if they have a, you know, if they have misbehaved in the past. But what you can't tell is the one that looks ordinary but has something sinister going on in his mind because you can't get in there and assess that. You can only base it on visual appearance. So I hope this helps. This is a little bit about cardiomyopathy. Um, I guess the message here is that if you have a very abnormal ECG, then it's always worth bearing the possibility of a cardiomyopathy in mind. If you have a family history of cardiomyopathy or sudden death, then it's definitely an important thing to get screened to have at least an ECG and an echocardiogram, all right? Especially if a first degree relative has been affected. Um, if you have a family history of people requiring pacemakers at a very young age, that can also point to a cardiomyopathy and it's worth again looking into it. Great. So I hope this helps. Uh, thank you once again uh, for um, watching my channel. It's coming up to the end of the year. I'm so, so, so grateful for all and the amazing support you've given me and I hope to put out more videos for you in the future. I'd love to hear what you think of this video. Thank you so much. All the best. Bye.